Genesis 39 today. And I just keep seeing Jesus in the scriptures uh, in ways that I either have seen him before but need to process out loud or in ways that I've never seen him before because I've never thought about the contexts that I'm currently in as a person in light of where I am. So in Genesis 39, Joseph is sold into slavery already and he goes into Potiphar's house. And one of the things that I, I never really thought about is the preparation. So just like David, Joseph is a shepherd, like I told you before, and the Bible says in verse two of chapter 39, and we keep seeing this phrase, the Lord was with Joseph. And I really wrestle with that. I always wrestle with the fact that the Lord was with Joseph and it's kind of like, well, Lord, if you would, then why is he sold into slavery? Like, that's just not fair. It's unjust. It's mean. It's wrong. It's crazy. Like, why? why? I'm going to get back to that. Not only that, but if you know the story, his shepherding skills are then used by God to help him really lead in this space of Potiphar's house, Potiphar's wife desires to sleep with Joseph, and so she accuses him falsely. So just like Jesus is falsely accused, Joseph is falsely accused. But then I, I keyed in on something this morning and I hadn't keyed in on it. I think it's because of where we are in society. When his wife, when, when Potiphar's wife talks about Joseph, she says, my husband has brought this Hebrew slave. That's what she says to her servants. And then in verse 17, what she says to her husband is this Hebrew slave. That you've brought here i just was interested that she didn't just say this slave or this person but she mentioned his ethnicity i just find that to be interesting and I, for whatever reason it just never stuck out to me i know why it's sticking out to me right now but she she caught she makes sure that she calls him a hebrew and so then he's deemed a criminal just like jesus is deemed a criminal he hasn't done anything wrong but he goes to prison because of her lie he is affected by her lie and in egypt i'm just saying i'm just telling you what's in the text all right just all i'm doing i'm just verbally processing her privilege allows her to lie on joseph and it gets him put in prison i've always thought to myself every time i read this why well, was he put in prison instead of killed i mean if potiphar really believed that this young hebrew boy who's not that old i mean he's he just passed a teenager if he thought that he really tried to rape his wife, well, why did he put him in prison instead of kill him? And and again, I'm not saying the text teaches this. This is just me processing out loud. I just wonder if it's Potiphar knew he had to do something, but I don't know if he believed what was being said about Joseph because he because of Joseph's character. And I, and I could be wrong about that, but I'm just amazed instead of killing him, which he would have had every right to do. He puts him in prison instead, and yet. In prison, verse 21, but the Lord was with Joseph in the prison and showed him his faithful love. Wait a second. I wrestle here because I'm going, Lord, faithful love to me would be not letting him get unjustly accused, uh, not letting him get unfairly treated. But, but how are you telling me you are the God of the universe, love is your M.O., and this is love? How is this love? This doesn't, that doesn't make sense. But again, the, the preparation of his shepherding skills are used even in the prison. And I would think Joseph would be like, man, forget this. Um, I've, I've tried to have integrity. I've tried to do the right thing. And, and it, but, but he doesn't. Instead, the cupbearer and the baker are there and he notices that they're upset. That shepherding skill of paying attention to people, that pastoral care, he says in verse 15, he tells him his story. He basically says, hey, look, when it happens, man, just remember me. Because, verse 15, I was kidnapped from my homeland, the land of the Hebrews. Now I'm here in prison, but I did nothing to deserve it. I wrote in my Bible, the rejected brother. The circumstances in which he lives is because he's been rejected. I actually wrote in my Bible, as you know from Jesus in Isaiah 53, despised and rejected a man of sorrows familiar with suffering you know joseph ends up naming his second son uh ephraim which means god has and he says because god has made me fruitful in the land of my grief 
familiar with grief, acquainted with grief, or familiar with suffering, familiar with sorrow. And that's who Jesus was, and, and we see that in Joseph. And so as I look through the Bible and see this story of unjust suffering, I just see so many other things. So Joseph then is remembered after two years. He's forgotten about for two years, but then he's remembered. He goes and he interprets Pharaoh's dream. And yet, as I read chapter 39 through chapter 42 this morning, I was just amazed that in chapter 42, as Joseph now is over all of Egypt, Joseph's brothers come to Egypt. But when they come, Jacob won't let Benjamin go with them because he's afraid that something might happen to him. Trauma affects Jacob. And Jacob was told a lie. Think about that. Jacob is so traumatized by what he has been told happened to Joseph that he won't let Benjamin go with his brothers. His brothers then, <clears throat> when they interact with Joseph, Joseph recognizes them. They don't recognize him because they've embraced the lie, hook, line, and sinker. They've told it for so long that they've had no choice but to believe it. And they have to because otherwise, at some point, it might come out, hey, Dad, he really wasn't. They always told him to the Ishmaelites, we have no clue what happened to him. I'm amazed that they say to Joseph, we are honest men, sir. Isn't that something? They say we are honest men and they're keeping this lie going and that they now have kept this lie going uh, for, for, for 13 years or so because we know Joseph was 30 years old when he began to do it. But, but they keep saying, we're honest men, sir. We're honest men. I was watching a video uh, by Dr. Joy DeGruy, I think is how you say her name, called Post Traumatic Slave Disorder. And what she was talking about is how trauma affects everybody, whether you were a slave owner and oppressed people or you were a slave and oppressed and i see that here in this text notice they keep saying we're honest men well why would they keep saying that well because they've had to tell themselves we're honest even though they lied the whole time about joseph joseph says if you're really honest men choose one of your brothers to remain in prison that's verse 19. verse 21 listen to how trauma has affected them even though they were the oppressors clearly Verse 21, they said among themselves, clearly we are being punished because of what we did to Joseph long ago. We saw his anguish when he pleaded for his own life. We would not listen. That's why we're in this trouble. Trauma affected them too. And there are many times where we don't think we are affected by our past. We are. We just don't know in all the ways that we're affected by our past. But when we look around and we see the cognitive dissonance, we see the disassociation, we see uh, the, the principle of foreshortened future. We see all of the uh, real symptoms of post-traumatic stress disorder in everyday life because of things like slavery, 9-11, Jim Crow, the Holocaust, World War I, World War II, the Great Depression. Many of us have not done the, the hard self-reflective work to make sure that we have gathered all of the golden nuggets from those times and when i say golden nuggets i don't just mean the things that are good but i mean the things that are bad that we need to learn from so that we never let them happen again verse 22 reuben is really scarred he says didn't i tell you not to sin against the boy but you wouldn't listen and now we have to answer for his blood i'm amazed that they return home and as they're telling the story to jacob verse 31 but we told him we're honest men not spies we're 12 brothers Sons of one father, one brother is no longer with us. As I'm reading through Genesis, I'm continuing to be reminded that Jesus was despised and rejected a man of sorrow, was acquainted with suffering, that the story of Scripture, the, the narrative, the redemptive narrative of Scripture is unjust suffering. If you unjustly suffer today, uh, if you've unjustly suffered, it's Father's Day. Happy Father's Day to all fathers. Uh, I'm going to do a post today called uh, lesson from my father or wisdom from my father I'm not quite sure yet but for all who have unjustly suffered that your dad right now may not be in your life because of something unjust you you may be experiencing unjust suffering in all kind of other ways I just need to you to know I, I want to encourage you with the truth that if you unjustly suffer you are never more like Jesus than when you unjustly suffer. I, did you hear me say, you know, really loving him, or if the Lord is with him, why is he going through all these negative things? Jesus. Who did God love more than anybody? Jesus. 
Who suffered more than anybody? Jesus. Why did God do that? Love. Who did God love? You and me. And, and he sent his son to unjustly suffer, be falsely accused, and then die for us in order that we might have life through his name. I'm convicted that I don't like suffering. I don't want to suffer. I get mad at God when I think about slavery in America. I get mad at God when I think about racism in America. I get mad at God when I think about all of the ways that I've been mistreated in life. And, and, I, and, and it's okay that I'm angry about those things. But it's not okay that I miss that in the midst of my unjust suffering, God is, by his grace, I know this sounds real crazy, I wrestle because I'm like, I, those things were, were wrong and bad. But at the same time, the Lord was there. And the Lord uses those things to this day to help me understand the gospel of unjust suffering, to help me understand the Jesus, the rejected son, the one who was despised and rejected, a man of sorrows, acquainted with suffering. And so unjust suffering really does help me really get the narrative of scripture that the God of the universe chose vulnerability in order that I might never be able to look at him and say, he doesn't know what I go through. No, as a father of a special needs son who suffers, God knows what I go through. As a black man in America who has unjustly suffered and has ancestors who have unjustly suffered and have been through atrocities, God knows what I go through. And I don't know what you might be facing. I don't know what you might be going through. I don't know what might be hurting you, but I'm telling you, Jesus is not a high priest that can't be touched with that. He was tempted at every point, just like you and I are, yet he was without sin. And he did that just for you and for me so that we might know who he is because he already knows us. Let that encourage you on this Father's Day. Let it bless you on this Father's Day. Be reminded on this Father's Day that as hard as things might be, God's still a good, good father. And he has a great plan for your life and for my life. Love you. Hope you have a great, great Sunday. Peace.